Hello everyone and welcome to this week's News Micro. Reporting with Canyons News, I'm Zena Taher. With news from across the Santa Clarita Valley, this is Canyons News. With grade schools opening up, officials have had to address an increase in the need for teen mental health resources. Here's Rachel Maddow with more. In light of the coronavirus pandemic, Henry Mayo Newhall Hospital plans to expand its operations and members of the community are urging the Santa Clarita City Council to include a teen mental health unit. Please, please consider uh, establishing a treatment unit for adolescents. Those are our kids. Those are our Santa Clarita kids. The Henry Mayo expansion is projected to accommodate 92 new patient beds and increase the campus by 200,000 square feet. In 2020, 348 mental health hospital referrals were given to Henry Mayo with the average wait time of 63 minutes to receive treatment. May I come to you as a mom? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, 10, year, 10 years ago, this, this Saturday, right. lost my middle daughter, Samantha, to suicide. I was in Henry Mayo Hospital and very unaware of the circumstances until I arrived. And my daughter was in crisis. Uh, I quickly learned that she was going to be sent out of Santa Clarita. When youth arrive and are admitted in crisis, they're sent to Del Amo, Bakersfield, Chino Hills, Northridge, UCLA, but they don't get to stay local. I commuted over the hill every single day after I taught locally and stayed there so I could be involved for the one hour that I got for counseling. Since the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic, the amount of calls to suicide and help hotlines in Los Angeles have increased by 8,000%. With schools opening up, faculty has taken it upon themselves to identify the problem. A lot of kids become more stressed and have more anxiety. Um, A lot of kids don't have, aren't very resilient. They don't know, they have no coping skills. Like people, yeah, and I I feel like that is something that definitely needs to be addressed in in order for people to move forward post-pandemic. An official decision to introduce the Mental Health Center is expected from the City Council on April 20th. For Canyons News, I'm Rachel Matta. The economic downturn caused by the pandemic has created financial strain for many students. COC hopes to ease some of the monetary burden by offering an emergency relief grant for students. Rita Tarosian has more. Throughout the pandemic, financial struggle has been a topic for concern for many Americans, especially students. Due to the recent bills passed by Congress, COC received approximately $3 million in funding under the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act, known as CRRSSAA, that is now available to students during the pandemic. The student service specialist at COC's financial aid office has some more information regarding the grant. This grant is a $1,500 grant that is eligible to students who are currently enrolled. Right now, there is no current deadline for the grant. The grant is based on a first come, first serve while funds are available. So apply today if you haven't applied. Like many students, Jordan believes this grant can be a big help. I feel like this grant is gonna be extremely helpful to a lot of students, just college, in general carries a lot of expenses for students um, and then adding the pandemic to it has given students a lot more hurdles and obstacles to overcome so I think that this is going to go a long way for a lot of students to help them. For many students like Brianna Orala, this grant has been a major help during these trying times. So getting the $1,500 right now, especially during the time when I'm planning on transferring for the fall of next semester, it's helped me a significant amount pay for my classes, my books, and just other school supplies that I had to have for school. And it's helped me also relieve some of the stress that I had from the bills I have to pay. So it's definitely been a great contribution for me. You can visit the COC website for more information or make an appointment with the financial aid office. This is Rita Tarosian for Canyons News. Students at College of the Canyons had the chance to hear from Jose Rivera, an Oscar-nominated screenplay writer, during their virtual Industry Insight series. Here's Destiny De La Cueva with more. The Industry Insight series at College of the Canyons operates to connect students to people who work in various parts of film and media. The students at College of the Canyons were fortunate enough to be able to hear from Jose Rivera, 
a Puerto Rican Academy Award-nominated screenwriter. His journey started at a very young age where he found major interest in theater, live performance, and the relationship between an audience and the performers. However, the road to his accomplishments did not come with ease. Jose shared his struggles, such as having to help family and never attending grad school. One of his breakthroughs was being scooped up by a producer that needed him to work on a sitcom in L.A. Shortly after, Jose wrote screenplays once a year to aid his children's education that never got produced. I wrote a film a year, got paid, put my kids through school, but never had a film done, ever. Motorcycle Diaries was yet another breakthrough where he found success. I got a call from my agent. I said, he said, Walter Salas, the Brazilian director, is looking for a writer to do the Motorcycle Diaries. Are you interested? And I said, sure. And I met Walter for lunch. And by the end of lunch, he offered me the jobs. Jose is currently single-handedly creating the screenplay for the book 100 Years of Solitude that is set to be produced and turned into a Netflix original series. So I started the process more than a year ago. Um, and I was hired to write the pilot. And they were very, very happy with, with those and asked me to write the second episode. Fortunately, COVID-19 and the vast amount of work it took away from people actually helped Jose with the more time on his hands being a luxury. Uh, I was just left with this material and I wrote probably, you know, I wrote it at the pace of an episode a month. Jose Rivera at the end was able to give students and those that attended a detailed explanation of how he landed a career in his field, as well as advice for those currently in the pursuit themselves. For Canyons News, I'm Destiny de la Cueva. Santa Clarita libraries have had their doors shut to the public throughout the course of the pandemic. Starting last week, locations have reopened just in time for upcoming book reports. Samantha Bailey has more. After being closed for over a year due to the pandemic, the Old Town New Hall Library reopened its doors on April 6th with some changes. We have regular cleaning and sanitizing and then we also are requiring that everyone over the age of two is wearing a face covering while they're in the building. Currently we're quarantining return materials for three days and we check them in on their fourth day. Library guests will have access to services beyond borrowing books, audiobooks, and DVDs. We have, um, you know, distanced furniture and computer stations. We do have children's computers, teen computers, and adult computers. So anyone that has a library card in good standing can log in for an hour, and they also are getting their free prints per day. The Old Town New Hall library staff are excited to welcome visitors again. It was so quiet for over a year that it's super exciting to have people back in here. The library has also resumed some in-person activities for visitors. They're out on our patios and on our porches, and they are limited registration only, but we are having a presentation of story time, songs, and just kind of welcoming back some of the kids who either were former story time participants, and this is their first time back in a year, or for most part, it's kids who have never been to a story time. Patrons of the library are eager for the reopening as well. We're going to see I'll see adults, she'll see other kids. Like the library has always been a really important place just to have another place. For more information on library hours, programs, or services, visit santaclaritalibrary.com. With Canyons News, I'm Samantha Bailey. Once again, reporting for Canyons News, I'm Zena Taher. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook.